Good morning, everyone. I'm pleased that we've got such a good turnout this morning. Um, and the importance of the volunteers and activists we have in each of our communities around the state is so vital to moving our issues forward. Uh, you know, when you walk in the LOB, you, or at least I almost feel like I'm walking into what I imagine would be entering an Arbe a Bardello. Uh, because the, the corporate lobbyists are there waiting for you by the escalators or at the entrance, and you, you know, I'm not one of their targets, so I don't feel put upon, but they are almost like leeches waiting to attack. So, but we are, our, our uh, efforts are not going unnoticed, and we are continuing to get in the face of legislators <clears throat> at the Capitol, uh, and to some degree are getting some progress in the governor's office, although it doesn't feel like it very often times. Uh, but just briefly, I want to uh, make a few comments on uh, our energy efficiency efforts, uh, particularly on the residential level. Uh, last year, we shared with the group a concept of reaching out to hard to reach, challenging to reach households um, to engage them in ramping up on energy efficiency efforts and, and uh, making renovations and upgrades. Um, and we eventually designed um, uh, a concept that was presented to the state's energy efficiency board during their public comments period last spring and informed that we would be submitting a proposal to reach these challenging homes. Uh, the utilities have done a decent job at reaching out to the general public via internet, TV commercials, radio, billboards, but it doesn't reach everybody, uh, particularly homes where you've got parents working two or three jobs uh, or have other issues in their homes. I feel like there's an entire segment of our population that's missing out on um, the opportunities that energy efficiency can provide. So we spoke at the Energy Efficiency Board public comment period, let them know this proposal was coming, uh, put together a proposal that was fairly expensive, I mean fairly expansive, uh, not, it wasn't the CNLM plan of 300 and some pages, but uh, uh, we tried to cover as much uh, information that was appropriate to share and not lose their attention. So it was about 23, 27 pages, I believe. Uh, we submitted the pros proposal and the board was a little caught off guard because they're not used to receiving unsolicited proposals. Uh, and they weren't quite sure what to do with it. So what do they do? It, <laughs> it, <laughs> it's almost like um, going to the White House with your report uh, when the White House is a target of the content of the report. They turned it over <laughs> to the companies to review and comment on. <laughs> And um, we didn't hear from the companies, and during the last few minutes of the last month's Energy Efficiency Board, uh, the chair said, you know, did the companies, did you look at the proposal and said yes? And their response says, well, you know, it's really not much there. Uh, we feel that it was mostly canvassing, and, you know, we've done that, we've tried that, and it doesn't work. Well, the commenter f of that statement was from one of the major companies, and they employ canvassing every year and have been particularly successful in New Haven and Bridgeport. So I'm not naming them, but everyone knows whose territory that is. <laughs> um, and I, I was just so outraged that none of the board members commented on what he had just said. And what it said to me is that not one board member read the proposal. Um, and it also indicated to me that either he had not read the proposal or intentionally misrepresented what the content was. Um, we used a suite of, of outreach methods that we talked about in the proposal that had proven successful time and time again for a number of causes throughout modern day history. Um, the company still have not come back to us with a formal response but uh, we did immediately submit a letter uh, indicating that we came to you in good faith 
and it was obvious that none of you had read the proposal. So I'm going to let Ann talk a little bit about that communication that uh, we sent to the Secretary of the Energy Efficiency Board. And we're going to pursue it. At the same time, we want to work with them. We want to engage with them and support the work they do. We just feel that if we're going to reach the number of households that need to be engaged over the next 20 years, you need a variety of outreach methodologies. And you need to reach out to, as, to all of the population. Um, again, and we're not, we're not saying the utilities aren't putting forth a good effort, but their, their, their traditional outreach methods don't get into every household. And we know that when you combine residential, commercial, and industrial buildings, they represent the largest emitters of greenhouse gas. So um, we're going to keep on ef the effort. We may even engage and contact some of you to ask if you will contact the Energy Efficiency Board um, to move this proposal further along. Ann? Thank you, Guy. Um, so good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Ann, the Connecticut Director of Clean Water Action. I want to just first say I'm so inspired by all of you. Um, Every time I come to these meetings, I just learn so much, and I'm really grateful that you all take the time to do this incredibly important work and continue to network with us. Um, we feel that this is a very valuable, these, our gatherings and our phone calls are very valuable. I hope you do too. Um, I think you do, because you're here on a beautiful Saturday. Um, but, you know, as Senna and Mitch said, um, we don't have much time. We have 11 years, if that, frankly. And the work of Clean Water Action is really based on two things. We know climate change is water change. And while we got our start um, protecting waters, we know that if we don't stop pollution, um, we're never gonna get clean water, right? So they're inextricably linked. And the value of energy efficiency um, is a pillar uh, just like renewables, to make sure that we meet these goals in 11 years or less, right? Um, we have got to be here and stick to this goal and fight even harder to help Mitch and Senna and Greta and my niece and nephews and my grandniece and every you know, child on this planet who we have let down. And we are not going to be discouraged that um, the Energy Efficiency Board uh, hasn't responded to us yet uh, formally. Um, we're gonna keep going. Um, we really want to continue this work, particularly to reach into communities that are most vulnerable. And uh, to what Guy, to build on what Guy said, we really wanted to assist the utilities in their, in their initiatives to do that. Um, to get into hard to reach communities that they traditionally have not been able to do and need to ramp up significantly in the next 11 years. Um, if they've only serviced 20, 25, 30% of the households, then we have a huge amount that we need to reach in the next 11 years and our proposal was simply to try to help them to do that. So we'll keep you posted on this. I'm so proud to work with all of you. Um, Mitch and Senna, you can count on us to be there right with you wherever you need us. Um, and we look forward to partnering with you. And as Guy said, we may ask um, as we go forward for your um, ongoing support with our proposal to get out into these hard to reach communities to advance energy efficiency. I wanna thank all of you who already did submit letters of support, uh, which we, we got 16 letters from towns and officials across the state, thanks to all of you. And um, we're, you know, we're gonna keep at it. So um, thank you all, and I'm happy to answer any questions later. I, I will just um, apologize. I do have to leave a little bit early this afternoon. Um, notably, I'm actually giving a talk in Milford on the health impacts of climate change, so, uh, <laughs> which was previously scheduled, so I do apologize, but it's such a pleasure to be here with you all today, and let's keep working. Uh, we're going to hear from Alex Rodriguez now from CHISPA, um, and uh, we'll just get his uh, presentation up. 
Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Clean Water Action, for extending invitation. You're always so inclusive of Chispa, Connecticut, and the work, the intersectional work that we're um, collaborating on together to make a more civically engaged uh, community. Um, Chispa, Connecticut, we're a program of the Connecticut League of Conservation Voters. Uh, as you know, the Connecticut League of Conservation Voters, uh, they're instrumental in helping get people together to um, advocate for environmental policy and release scorecards of how our leaders vote on the issues at the Capitol. And uh, to help with these endeavors, CHISPA uh, was uh, developed in two 2016 uh, to reach out into the community uh, to bring uh, those who aren't commonly at the table uh, to capture their story of how climate change has impacted them and bring their story to fruition at the Capitol or at their local town meeting uh, because, because that, is, that is where the magic happens. Um, in, 2000, in, in 2016, uh, I, was, I was inspired to take action on climate change because of a water bottle company that came to Bloomfield. I, I felt the urgency of the community. I noticed a lot of people were in despair over, you know, is this water going to be guaranteed to me? Why are they selling this water? It's the worst drought in decades. I, I felt that alarm. And so I got together with my friends and we formed an environmental group. And along the way, I met Chispa, Connecticut and the League of Conservation Voters and that has played a key role in my professional development and has also made me a better community organizer. Um, so uh, here is here's my team. Here's Leticia, Leticia Colón de Mejías, who's been instrumental in molding um, my knowledge on energy equity uh, as it relates to the environmental justice movement. Uh, here is Jeff Hush, another, another energy expert and uh, also the Qi Gong facilitator at the past um, climate strike. Shout out to Jeff. And here is my colleague Desmond Batts who spoke on transportation, clean buses for healthy ninos at the climate strike as well. It's, uh, it's thanks to this well-rounded team that we've been able to uh, have a couple, um, organize a couple of successful committees. Uh, one of them being the People for the Planet Committee. Um, I realize I'm going on a tangent. Um, but one of them being the People for the Planet Committee, uh, we, we got together um, a couple of our closest al allies in molding a platform uh, that was adopted into the ask to the governor uh, for the uh, for the climate change emergency. Uh, the People for the Planet Committee uh, met a couple times and voted on a platform uh, that really indicated what we believe is key to tackling our climate crisis. Uh, those things being supporting climate change education and energy conservation in all schools supporting equal access to expanded energy efficiency programs, which lower energy, energy burdens, pollution, and other expenses, oppose development of new fossil fuel plants in our state, support transition to 100% renewable energy, support expanded public transit and equitable transition to clean public transportation, oppose using VW money for diesel buses and any other fossil fuel projects, supporting the implementation of EV school buses, supporting laws which lower the use of single-use plastic and styrofoam products, supporting expanding and correcting our recycling programs to lower plastic pollution, and lastly, uh, supporting Connecticut's environmental justice law, supporting a stronger environmental justice law, which 
which prevents any more hazardous facilities coming into communities of color and low-income communities who have felt the brunt of climate change and environmental racism. Um, grassroots organizing involves capturing the stories of those most impacted and bringing them, bringing them to the table and helping them voice their truth. Speaking truth to power is key to this movement. Um, and so, um, as I mentioned, uh, we connect, uh, we, hold, we hold informal meetings with the community to gather input on the environmental issues most important to them. We support them. Uh, we spark action um, in coordination with clean, clean Water Action last year and a variety of other groups. We held the first ever Youth Climate Action Day, uh, which was instrumental in moving the state towards 40% renewable energy by 2030, as well as a 45% greenhouse gas reduction uh, percentage by 2030 as well. It was, um, it was one of the proudest days I've ever had as an organizer, and I, I thank Anne specifically for being such, a, a, such an enormous source of support in that realm. Um, and then we take a stand as organizers. Um, we take a strong, strong stand on equity, and we focus our work on ensuring environmental laws and regulations address issues relating to the is relating to the communities that we organize. Um, we're now working in Hartford, Windsor, Bloomfield, Middletown, and. Soon we'll, we will be uh, revisiting Waterbury to hold an environmental justice training in November. Um, current areas of focus, climate action, energy equity, waste reduction, plastic and styrofoam, as well as transportation and EV buses, i.e. our clean buses for healthy Ninos campaign. And so we, we hold, these, we hold these community trainings, seminars, and classes to help us engage with the community and gather information, as well as inform our communities and connect with local leaders. And we work off of a strategic plan and provide weekly and monthly, monthly reports to our CTLCV leadership and national CHISPA team, because CHISPA is not only in Connecticut, it is in four other states. It is in Maryland, New Mexico, Colorado, Nevada, Arizona. Um, okay. And so here, here is some, some, important, um, some important quotes we captured from the community in our day-to-day -day work. This past month, we held a climate action painting event uh, to gear up for a climate action art walk that we're hosting uh, in about a week. And the purpose, the purpose of the climate action painting activity was to get youth and adults together to paint what they feel their environment should look like or how they feel they've been impacted by climate change and pollution. And so uh, Maria, who is a committee member of ours, um, noted, climate action is, imp is an important cause in my heart, and I value the work that you do. It is incredibly and truly important. I'm happy to support your work and work with you. Um, Maria, as I mentioned, is a committee member, as well as my friend Dimitri de Alessandro. Uh, say hi. <laughs> we we partnered up with Dimitri and Maria to host a climate action art walk in the coming, in the coming month because, as I, as I mentioned with the climate action painting activity, we, want, we wanted to recruit artists to articulate how climate change impacts their communities in a visual manner because how people interpret things um, how people interpret things is not only, um, it's not single, it's not a single universe. 
there is a multitude of ways that people interpret things and choose to in express themselves and the arts is Im an important way of doing that. The arts is a very strong form of organizing that we've found over this past year and we are looking forward uh, to the amazing work that we'll showcase in MAC 650. Um, here, um, here is a slide um, where we uh, connected, where we connected youth from the Connecticut climate strikes to the Democratic and Republican leaders of the Energy and Technology Committee. Um, we had an in-depth conversation with them on addressing the importance of protecting energy efficiency funding. Um, this was a prelude um, to a joint delivery we had with Clean Water Action, Connecticut Fund for the Environment, um, in delivering 2,000 petitions to the governor and state leaders asking for the return of the energy efficiency funds so that people can save money on their energy, as well as fight climate change. That is our stand up for climate action and energy equity event. And there was, um, there was our energy equity press conference where we, we helped organize 21 legislators to come together to address the importance of energy efficiency funding um, in their communities. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, that resulted in a delivery of more than 2,000 petitions to the governor, uh, as well as other legislative leaders. And so this, these kind of events are important because we need to f facilitate civic engagement guidance um, to newer activists in the movement because striking is one important element but there's also op-eds there is also testifying at the capitol uh, itself or at a town meeting which is really intimidating sometimes when you feel when you feel that one or two legislators may not be on your side in a particular cause but we have focused so much on energy efficiency and energy equity in this past year because it directly impacts working class people. It's important that we save them an extra dollar, especially ahead of our winter season, um, because it's gonna get cold. And if you have cracks in your foundation, they need to be sealed. But not everyone out there is aware of the energized Connecticut program that has been so instrumental in helping these communities receive the proper auditing and installation that they need to live dignified lives. Um, in regards to our waste reduction um, focus, uh, we got together um, we got together the community, the Middletown community, to um, to listen to a story uh, titled "Pesky Plastic," authored by Leticia, and it was there that they learned about the harms of disposable plastic. And following this, we we passed out glass bottles and and paints so that they can decorate and take home with them and discourage this single-use plastic behavior. And so I'm going to fast forward a bit because I have, um, I have mentioned um, most, of, um, most of our work on community organizing in, re in relation to energy equity. Um, I think that, I think that um, in regards to energy equity, uh, something something critical um, that we could all um, advocate for is a mail-in campaign of the HESAE applications um, because people have people have a mistrust of signing documents. You know, it, 
you never know when you're going to get blindsided by section I a that screws you over. Um, and so a mail-in campaign, um, as opposed to a face-to-face -face interaction of, hey, sign this SIE form and we'll help you save energy, it's, it's not always going to work. I have successfully signed up three individuals for the HESIE program, and I would like to sign up more, um, but there needs, to lot, there needs to be a lot more education on ways to build trust with the community uh, before, um, before this is um, tackled even more. Um, and so, I want to end it there.